my name is Kayla and I am here with Kimberly the Tinkata, Tinkaton eventually, into a competitive Pokemon. What are you doing sleeping? We got a lot of work to do, Kimberly. The goal of this is to show you guys how to build a competitive Pokemon in real time. I'll show you guys my build um, on the screen now. <laughs> Basically, the goal of this build is I want my Tinkaton, Tinkaton to be able to survive. Um, and then be able to hit with Garrison Hammer. It's setting up defenses, sitting behind those defenses and then hitting. Protect allows it to hit every other turn without the negative effect of being, you know, vulnerable every other turn kind of thing. Um, and that plus Thunder Wave and Reflect minimizes the damage that um, I should take. So that is the goal for building out this Pokemon. I don't know if it's like the best competitive Tinkaton ever, but at least you'll get an idea. Steel is the Terra type that I want so that we can get Stab Gigaton Hammer. You would need to do raids in order to change the Terra type to get those Terra Shards. I have the right ability uh, for what I wanna do. It can also be changed with like an ability capsule or whatever. So we're gonna start by changing the moves. Let me sort these by name. Protect, Thunder Wave, and Reflect. If you don't have TMs, you can always um, make them so that you have them. We need to change our nature. And so to do that, we need to go in and we need our mints. So these are currently sorted by name. We're gonna sort by type. We need a careful mint. Now we can start to power up different stats. Powering up stats can take a long time. So there's a couple different options for how you can do it. So sometimes you can use feathers. These are gonna increase the base points by one. Another way is to use these items. That's gonna up it up by 10, but I find these to be extremely expensive way to do that. We have the power, yeah, power bracer, power belt, uh, we have power lens, power anklet, power weight. So I have most of them. If you read what it says, it says holding this bracer reduces the Pokemon's speed, but allows its attack stat to grow more quickly. So we want the one that says allows its HP stat to grow more quickly, which is the power weight. So we're going to give this item right here. Ha ha, it's now holding the power weight. Woohoo. Now we need to go faint 28 Lechonks. Regular Lechonk has one EV. So that means if we do 28 Lechonks with this item, each one gets us nine and we reach 252. So yeah, we're gonna faint 28 of these Lechonks. <laughs> and you'll be surprised it doesn't actually take that long. I'm keeping track on here, like how many I'm fainting. So that way I don't mess up and faint too many or too few. If you run into the wrong Pokemon, it'll be okay. You just run away. Um, what counts for the EVs is either fainting it or catching it. I have been EV training Pokemon since Pokemon Crystal. I was training at my Kingdra, not realizing really what I was doing all that much. I was like, why is my Kingdra so bad? Turns out my Kingdra had only defense EVs and it would just lose. Like the difference in stats was enough that it like hardly did anything. Now there's like, there's berries that you can give them um, to make their stats go down. But back in the day, that was not a thing. And so it was really, really annoying. Not only could I not fix its stats, but there's a limited number of Kingdras that you can get in that game because of the way the items work really. And so I couldn't even get another Kingdra. And yeah, so I just had an awful Kingdra and it sucked and I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I used all my computer time to figure out why does my Kingdra suck and how can I never do this again? Sometimes people will say like, oh, it's so hard to raise competitive Pokemon. I'm like, you have no idea. Like it was so hard back in the day. I want more people to be knowledgeable about how to do this kind of stuff. So that's kind of the point of this video. So if you're somebody who has said like, it's really hard, like this video is kind of for you. This is how quickly you can train up a competitive Pokemon. It doesn't have to, take super, super long, and then you can participate in those raids. Without a competitively trained Pokemon, the raids are gonna be a lot harder. So it's not even just a matter of like, oh, like I wanna be able to play against other people, so I'm gonna learn competitive. It's like, I wanna be able to get all the cool stuff that the game has to offer and participate in everything the game has to offer. So now you need competitive Pokemon. And I know some people are looking at that as like a huge detriment, but I think it's awesome. It's not that hard, like you get the items and then you just do this. The hard part should be creating the Pokemon, like figuring out like what moves you want it to have. Look at what other people have done 
and copy other people's builds. Some people will say like, oh, you're copying builds, uh, nah. but no, like if something works, if something's not broke, like use it, especially when you're starting out and then you can see like, oh, I really liked this. I really didn't like this. What if I change this? What if I do that? And that's how people like build their Pokemon. As you get used to it, you might go, oh, I really like stall strategies or, you know, I really like trick room or, you know, I like rain teams. <laughs> Speaking of the rain in the game, <laughs> you know, as you play and you learn, like, I really like playing this way, you might figure things out that other people haven't figured out for the game yet. Like, how cool is that? These are just my opinions. I think it's, I think it's cool when people are interested at least in trying it and playing around. I think one of the misconceptions too that like leads to people being afraid, in addition to people being afraid of like, how do I do this? Um, I think a lot of times people are afraid that they're just gonna lose. And you are. Like, remember what Nimona says in the game? She's like, yeah, losing is a thing sometimes, but you learn from it and that helps you get better. 100%. You are going to lose sometimes and it's okay. Like, I've lost plenty of times, you know? And every single time I've lost, I've learned something. It's, it's a really important thing. And I think that's a good life lesson in general. I wonder if another reason is people don't have people to play against. Um, but now with like different online features, that's actually pretty easy too. So HP is done. So I'm gonna cross it off on my list. And next we need to train defense. So for defense, let's go get the item. Power Belt allows its defense set to grow more quickly and we're going to give it kind of relaxing. You don't have to like think that much when you're doing this. So we've done those and now we need plus six for defense. You can actually use these resist feathers. They're gonna raise the points by one. I could alternatively, after you take the item off, get six more points. The feathers aren't as rare, so I don't mind using them. I'm gonna go buy the item for special defense. I guess it's the only one I haven't gotten yet. There's a couple different places that you can get it, um, but I tend to just really like Lavincia. While we're here, we're also gonna buy some bottle caps. First things first, we need to sell some stuff. I'm making a video, and it'll actually be out before this post, um, about how to make money. As you can see, like, this is a ridiculous amount of money. Chancy supply. You can get mints here. Here's where you can get, like, ability capsule, and see how these cost like 10,000. It costs so much money, but I would rather use my money to get other things like bottle caps and stuff. Are bottle caps not here? Thought bottle caps are, there's bottle caps. Ah, here we go, general goods. All right, so we need special defense specifically. Okay, and then the other thing we need more of is bottle caps, special defense. There we go, power band. Give to Pokemon. Okay, so we're gonna actually go into area zero. This is because we can get two EVs for this instead of one, so I'm just gonna show you guys how this works. This is the fastest way to get to area zero. We need to paint 19 fluid, and I'm gonna track it in my handy dandy notebook. Jump off our speed EVs, by the way, so if you guys are somebody that's looking for a good speed one. Oh, there's another fluid. Oh, oh, hey, there's a bunch of them. Yay! Okay, so now, cause I was like, we're gonna naturally evolve anyway. And then, when do you learn Gigaton Hammer? I think it's like when you evolve, right? Yeah, see, now we're gonna have all our moves. So this is the hyper training guy. We're gonna use bottle caps. I have six, and there are six stats. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only thing we need to do if we take off this item and we're gonna give it an Aguav Berry. So now we have our fully built Pokemon that has all of its moves. It has its EVs, it has its IVs, it has its types, it has everything. All right, so let's look at how this works. See how it like doesn't quite take things out? That's kind of a problem. Even if I had it have more gigaton hammers, it's not gonna be enough. I went into it thinking like, maybe this will work. Like it's not gonna be great, but it will at least have things that it can do. Um, and the more I'm seeing it, the more I'm like, most other Pokemon do this better. So why would you run Tinkaton? I really like the Pokemon Tinkaton, but unfortunately I don't think it's very great for competitive. Hopefully this gave you guys an idea of how to at least build competitive Pokemon though. I'm at the step where you kind of iterate and you see like, okay, what worked, what didn't work. Obviously Gigaton Hammer needs to be PP upped in order for this to work. I think the Guab Berry is not the correct item to have on a Tinkaton. Um, and I also think that there needs to be a different move between Protect, Thunder Wave, and Reflect. It's 
missing something. Like it's missing a part of its kit in order to be effective. It feels like it needs like some something. But I don't know, what do you guys think? How are you building Tinkaton? Are you even using Tinkaton? I hope that you guys enjoyed this video about how to build competitive Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I hope that it makes you feel more comfortable about building Pokemon in this game. But yeah, if you guys have any questions about um, building competitive Pokemon, I can do my best to answer. I don't play competitive all that often, but like I at least know somewhat what I'm doing. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like, um, and also make sure you subscribe so you can see the next one. Um, my next gameplay videos are going to focus on a Nuzlocke of Pokemon Scarlet, so if you like those that type of content, um, yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Bye!